um, ex-students from one of my tutorials is here. She just sent me through. Um, hi, how are you, Karen? Hope you're well. Um, so today, or tonight, I'm going to show you just a couple of great, easy things that you can do with technology in your um, in your classes when you are working in your language classes, where you can use some scripted language to be able to um, uh, really invigorate and bring bring forward some really creative ideas in the in the classroom. Also, if you have issues with, you don't have access to the internet, the very first thing I'm going to be showing you tonight is something that you don't need the internet for, okay? So without any further ado, I will share my screen. Um, and I'm going to start with the, normally I, I do joke around and call it PowerPointless, but with PowerPoint tonight, I'm going to show you some really exciting things that you can do where you're able to use and add voices and images to PowerPoint and actually create a story online. So oh, let me share my screen with you. So here is the, the humble PowerPoint presentation. So when we look at the power, at PowerPoint, I just need to move it away. So what we can do, we can insert images, we can insert videos, insert audio, but what we can also do is insert audio straight onto and record straight onto our PowerPoint presentation. So if I was to go over, pop over to Google Images just to get um, a quick image of Sydney Harbour Bridge. All right, here we go. So if I click on here, I'll copy and paste that into my PowerPoint. I know you guys can't see me doing that. So here is, I right click and I pop on the picture of the Harbour Bridge. Now, what I can do now is actually put on some voice about the Harbour Bridge. So if I come over to insert and I pop on over to audio, now, all, all your PowerPoint presentations will have this function where we go into audio. So just as long as your laptop has a microphone, you are able to do this, okay? So if you, I'll just pop out for a second, just a couple of disclaimers. I'm guessing if you've got a, an old desktop that doesn't have a microphone attached, you're not going to be able to do this activity. Whereas you, if we move into looking at any laptops, most laptops now will have a camera and it will have a voice, um, a microphone to pick up your voice. So I will pop back into here. So here we have audio. So I click on audio and I click on record. And I might call this Sydney Harbour Bridge. And then just like any um, recording function, the red circle means record. And you'll actually see this where it says total sound length that will start to increase obviously as you are recording. So if I click, this is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. I press stop. I can hear what it says. Just to double check. And then I press OK. And here it is. I can, my sound is here. If I, I share my sound with you as well you'll be able to hear it. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. 
So when I go to my slideshow and I click from the beginning, here is, I just hover my mouse over the image, over the image of the speaker and I press play. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. All right. So for then for your students that are learning their language, it's it would be great for them to they could record it in English and then they could record it in their in their language that you are studying on the weekend in your community schools. So what I'm going to get you to do, hopefully you are on a computer, uh, obviously you are, but on a computer with PowerPoint, all right? What I'd like you to do is have a quick go. I'll just run through those steps again. Um, and I'd like you to have a go at recording your voice and seeing what happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen again and just demonstrate once more what you do. So here we, you open up a PowerPoint. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to insert a new slide and just go through it step by step. I'm going to, I got the Harbour Bridge from the internet. You might want to just go onto your computer and find a photo. Um, so what you can do, you can either insert a picture from a file. So here is my here in my photos, I might bring the Bbot robot over. I pop that in here. I then go to insert over to audio. I click on audio and I click record audio. And I'm all right, Bbot. I click record. This is my yellow and black Bbot robot. I press OK and then it sits here. So you can move. The good thing about the speakers, you can move them around. So if you, you might have six or seven pictures there, um, and then you can move your sounds around wherever you would like. So what I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to play around with that on your own PC or on your laptop that you are using and just when we come back, we'll get some, I guess, some understanding on how, um, if there were any issues, I'm, I will stand here and if give me a shout out if you need um, a little bit of help. All right. Can you record for? Um, I have seen recordings for um, about two minutes. Um, I probably wouldn't go any further than that only due to the fact that once you are record when you are recording and there's so long once if you want to save that document you don't want it to be too many audio files in there just in case it sort of goes over the limit um, if you're trying to uh, yeah most definitely it will increase your file size so that that would be my only um i wouldn't go too much longer than two minutes per slide what I'd like to show you now is a little function on there as well. I'll go back to the Mahaba Bridge. Now, when you right click, um, when we right click back on our speaker, it we can trim it. So that's where we can cut bits and pieces off. We don't want to do that. We want to go over to style. And I've decided to, if I want it to play in the background, that means that it will actually, as soon as that slide comes on, the dialogue will start, your audio will start to play. So I'm going to show this you. This is the Sydney Harbour like. Bridge. It is located in Sydney. Right. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. All right. Whoop. The problem is, unless you then move slides, it will keep talking the same. Because I've only used um, this is a Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. That will just keep playing on loop until you move move along. So, 
if you're going to have it playing in the background, my advice is you then transition your slides so that once that audio stops, you can move on, okay? So I will show you what that looks like. And then if I go from slide, slideshow, from the beginning, so as soon as it opens. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is located in Sydney. This is the Sydney and as you Harbour see, Bridge. It that is located speaker icon in has now Sydney. gone. So the when it goes into the full screen, um, that actually disappears. So you just hear the sound in the background. So if you just want your students or yourselves to record something um, that they someone looks at and you, they're just listening, and you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about pressing play at the top. So it'll just be the picture of what you have, and then it will start to work. Okay. As soon as the slide starts, you will the voice will start. Okay. So that is something quick and easy, and kids absolutely love it to be able to record their voices straight onto PowerPoint. And what I love about that is it's not clunky. So you don't have to, um, someone said there is a voice recorder if you don't want to use um, PowerPoint. Sometimes when you're do your voice recording somewhere else, then you've got to save it, then you insert it. Sometimes there could be some lost, um, lost audio, or the file doesn't come over correctly. If you are doing your voice straight onto PowerPoint, it's it works straight through. So whatever you're recording there, um, you don't have to then save it somewhere and bring it back in. It's already on there. So it's saved straight onto your PowerPoint. Saves you having that extra step of saving it and bringing it over. Uh, with this one, do you not need to save to download? No, once you have recorded your voice, it's already there. Okay, it's straight onto the slide. Okay, so there's no need to record it. The only thing is, if you want to use it in the next slide, you may have to re-record. Okay. What would you, um, Shazia, what do you, would you like me to show again? Grant, I think um, if I may intervene, it's um, it's fine because oh, you if got, we can you um, if we can just keep going because you've got loads of stuff to show us. And yeah. like I said to everybody, we do have the um, the recording for everybody, so you can you can you can look at it uh, when you go you know in your own time, people. So um, it's, oh yep, so okay. Someone has asked, can I insert a MP3? Yes, you can. I will share my screen and show you how that is done, and then I'll move on to my next. Um, slide. So in here in insert, um, audio, audio from my PC. So anything that has been loaded um, into, into your power, onto your um, PC, any MP3 can be put straight on. Now someone has said, is this in Google Slides? I did have a play around with Google Slides. It's not as easy as that. So my suggestion is you do it on PowerPoint, then upload it into Google Slides. That would be my advice because there's limited functions in Google Slides, but um, when you use PowerPoint, um, everything transfers over. So use, it, use PowerPoint would be my suggestion. Now, one more thing before I move over onto my iPad is looking at something called Powtoon. Now, Powtoon is a... You can use it for free um, or there is a subscription. But obviously once, um, once you use the, the free, there's only limited things you can do with your free membership. So what I'm going to do, I've got a free membership uh, and it's as simple as going into um, just your a Google account. So if you have Gmail, um, whatever you use to access your Google Drive, you just use that. So 
Um, I will show you how that all works. I'll log out. So I just went to powtoon.com. I went over to login. And I just clicked on the Google. And then up here, um, just into my, my Gmail account. So what I, look, what I like about this is there's plenty of templates, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if you, you can start from scratch. I suggest starting at a template first. Now, what they've got, they've got a whole range of different, I'm just going to click on this one just to show you. Okay, but unfortunately, this is in the pro version. So you can't, unfortunately, that you can't use that. So there's only a few different um, styles that you can use to uh, look at maybe this one. Yeah. So once you like it, if you click edit this template, <laughs> and once we go to the first slide it's just a they've got everything there for you um you might say um this might be a great way to introduce what you're doing for the week you can create one of these little videos that plays as your students are coming into the classroom Okay, and we might say Saturday, if you don't get this Saturday, which is the, what's today's Saturday's date? The 20th of March. Um, and I'm just going to call it um, Grant's Room. Okay, so the, as you can see, you can change fonts and do all sorts of things. So then when we go to play, okay, so then you can come, if I just pause that, I come here, then I can change what are the objectives for what are we going to be learning today? And then, so it's, it's, a, it's a PowerPoint presentation that has already been animated for you. They've put music in the background and then you can just share it or export it as download the video as an MP4 and then it's ready to go. So that's a really good way for you guys to intro, introduce what you're doing for the week. Uh, if you're getting your students to do a little activity. So that's a really good platform. So it's actually gone beyond what we're doing in PowerPoint and they've actually put in a whole range of different, um, different sounds. And there's also some characters that you can play around with in the free version. So then we just pop back. I want to go back to the beginning. And what it it's what it's like Google, it'll save. So here we are. It's got my um, under my power tunes. It's got my company objectives. So that's the great thing. It's one of those, it's like Google Drive and all the Google Docs, it will save automatically. So if we go into untitled, this is one that I did last year. Okay, let's see what I did. Yep. 
that's not too exciting. Um, <laughs> you, you could do a whole, um, with that one, for instance, you could do um, different, different languages. So you could have um, what it is in English and then what it is in the language that you're teaching. And you could probably insert a picture there if you like. And so if I go to edit Powtoon into my studio, that's a very quick one. But as I said, this is an extension from PowerPoint and you have the ability, can we? Um, duplicate, yep. So if you wanted to continue on with the same, okay, let's add, we're gonna let you add, may not let you add in. Lonely let you swap scenes. It won't let you import a picture into there. But if you wanted to, there are options for you. Um, you could have some different sayings, if you like, and then you can continue on um, getting students to have a go at, um, at creating those as well. So as I said, um, the the version the free version i guess have a bit of a play around with it see what can be done with it and then um and i saw in the um alex said there's options for you could use some grant money i think is that what you wrote alex i thought that sort of pop up as as we went by for subscription yes 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 Yep, excellent. Can I just add, sorry, Grant, um, to, to, to butt in. Um, um, the, the internet grant, uh, the internet related technologies grant. So if, uh, if anyone's interested, speak to your principals. Okay. All right. What I'm going to share with you now is, um, it's called a pedagogical wheel. So what this is, this is a way that you can integrate technology into, the, into your classroom and it gives you a whole range of different ideas. And it's with the SAMAR model. So what the SAMAR model looks at is around here, so substitution. So if you're just substituting um, an app for a piece of paper, all that is, there's no functional change. And as the wheel goes around, you're augmenting it. So you're starting to um, diversify slightly something with a bit of change. Then we're looking at down the bottom here where you are modifying. So significant task redesign and then redefinition, which is the R that looks at a, a new task, which is previously inconceivable. What I love about this, and I will share this website with you all now. What I love about it, is copy and paste there we go any app well around the around here is all our the blooms taxonomy so remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating but in this circle here it's got some activities for you that help you realize what part of that these apps can help us do so if you want to be so creative, which I know um, talking to Alex, that's um, the angle that he wanted me to go with. So you guys want to be creative in the classroom. If you have apps, here are some great activities that you can do with these apps here. And what I love about this is you can look at the app. If you've got no idea what the app is all about, you click on it. And it will take you straight to the app store and tell you exactly what the app's all about. Okay. Taking you to the most expensive one there. It was $21.99. Um, if I go to there's iMove, if you just click on, oh, if I click on Chatterpix, this is what I'm going to show. So if I click on Chatterpix. 
So here we are, gives you some images, what it looks like on the, on the iPad. Then we come to what's new. It's free. That's always a bonus. And then it gives you all the information as it does in the app store. I really encourage you to have a look at this pedagogy. Well, it's a pedagogical work because it's all to do with the iPad. And this is the latest version. So there are other versions out there. This is all um, updated. So um, what I what I really like about this is they're all, I think it's apps. You got the Apple apps and this Android apps there as well. So, and it gives you a whole range of what is understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. So there's some really great activities on there um, for you to actually create. So I'm going to now jump over to my iPad to show you. Um, no, um, there are Apple, there are Android apps as well. What I'll do, I will try and find the pedagogical wheel for um, Android as well um, and give that to you as well if some of you have Android. Um, I know some of these apps are on Android as well, but these ones are going linking straight to the um, Apple Store. What I'll do, I will find, because I did see that before I jumped on today, I'll get the Android version for you as well. So just let me share my screen over here. It won't be one second. Share my screen. So I'm going to show you Chatterpix, which is the um, little camera with the duck above his eye, um, right next to OneNote here. Duck, duck, moose. Welcome to Chatterpix. Okay, so with Chatterpix, it's great. Um, if I pop into gallery, I'll show you an example. So it's the, you can make the, um, the jumping castle um, talk, but uh, pedagogical wheel. So what I love about this, kids absolutely love it because what they can do Sorry, I am just getting the Android before I forget. Here we go. Here is Android for you all. Um, I can take a photo. All right. I'm just going to pick someone from my, here's a dentist. Okay, we'll use a dentist. So I click on my picture. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right, so here is my picture. What I do now, I draw a little line where my mouth is. Then I go to here. That is the, and I think you get about 30 seconds of recording. Yep, there we go. And the great thing with this is the time does roll around, which allows students to be able to um it's a it's a nice visual for them to be able to see our see the timing of things okay and how long they've got to go whatever you, they record whatever they say is when what will happen and then if i play come on it's supposed to make we have a bit of an issue there some reason didn't record me. Okay, if that issue comes up, go to your settings and just make sure that Chatterpix, yep, it's allowing the microphone. All right, well, we might try that again. Duck, duck, moose. 
because what's supposed to happen, my mouth is supposed to Welcome move to and talk what I have said. Okay, so let's go, let's try again. Keep current selection. Um, okay, cross the mouth, there we go. Record. Hello everyone. This is take two. I think I realized that the microphone was leaning on the table, therefore I couldn't hear it. So, no. And this is a great technical issue. What we can do, what I'll show you at the end, um, what, hopefully it will make my mouth move. You can change the colors, what kids love to do. I can give myself some glasses. So all I do is click on what I want. There's a pirate hat. And put a pretty snowflake. You can, all you need to do is just pinch, pinch that to make it bigger or smaller. Um, when it comes to Christmas time, you can do some lovely Christmases. Then we have a nice frame around it. I can also type something. Um, Trans um, chat. There we go. And then I can move that around. So hopefully now it will all work. No, it's not liking my talking. It is always the way. Okay, so what would normally happen is my mouth would move and talk and record, and then I click the button down here and it exports it to my camera roll. Kids absolutely love that. I reckon it has just got stage fright and that's why it's not working for me. But most definitely it does work, trust me. Um, I think that might, it might have something to do with my iPad and I would just probably just have to reinstall it. Normally if that happens, because everything else is looking, um, everything, everything there was on so I'm guessing um, I'll just have to um, just wipe it off and put it back onto my iPad if it doesn't work so that's a good troubleshooter um, oh there you go Caroline's having a go at it now okay um, so that's another great tool to use for your students um, I've used it when I taught in the library so I actually got them to do little book reviews um, for a little 30 second book review. So they've taken a picture of the front cover of the book, given the book a mouth and then did their little book review. Um, other, you could do um, a whole range of different things, getting a picture and you don't always have to draw the mouth either. Okay. You can still record over the top about the picture for 30 seconds without doing the mouth. So you, if you just want students to be recording themselves, that still works, okay? So you don't always have to have the mouth there. So I, when I've got students to record on that, they've just um, simply recorded over the top and not put the mouth on, it still works. Another thing that I'd like to show you, because I know that I want to sort of have maybe the last five to 10 minutes, any questions and answers, or any questions and I'll give you some answers. Um, I'm going to show you on my iPad a bit of iMovie because um, now with iMovie you have the opportunity to do some green screening on the iPad, okay? So if I go into iMovie and I go into creating a new movie, so I can either do the trailer or the movie. I'm going to pick movie. All right, I'm going to create one for myself. I click on the 
picture there. I'm just going to turn it around. Now, I don't have a green screen with me, but I think what will happen, you will get a bit of an idea of what you can do. So here we go. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my iPad. Um, hello, hello, hello. Okay, I click stop and I'm going to use that. So I, as I do, I do it as normal. I drag my, my image or my video reel right to the, back to the beginning. If I've done this properly, um, if it's done properly with a green screen, it works perfectly. What I'm going to show you, it doesn't quite work because I don't have a green screen behind me. But what I do, once I get back to the front, I click on photos. And then I'm just going to pick this picture here at the top. So whatever background you want on your, as your backdrop has to be already on your camera roll. So I click here and then I click the three dots and it asks me, do I want to cut away? Now what a cut away is, that's for that image to sit over the top of my face. So you won't see anything. You'll see, hear me going, hello, hello, hello. Um, but you won't actually see um, me waving. You'll just see the picture. A picture in a picture. I'll show you what that looks like. That's like the like the um, the news when you have, and you can move that around. Okay, you can move that around, but we don't want that on there because we're going to do something else. There we go. Select that. So I'm going to do that, and I'll split screen. I'll just do it half and half. But I'm going to do green screen. Yeah, so as you can see, you can see me in the background. But what would normally happen, that would go for my entire background. And then the kids can be talking in front of it. Okay. I don't mind that one. I do, however, if I will talk to you now, I personally, myself, with that type of green screening, kids don't, like they could see what's going to be in their background, but they may, because you're at it post-production, so after you've recorded, it doesn't really work, okay? What does work, and this is a paid app, but I think it's only... I'm going to say it's at the most for uh, $4.99. It is called, no, is it on there? No, it's not. Of course it isn't. It's called, oh, there it is, doing up the top, the green screening. Um, so the great thing with green screening with doing is, when you add a, create a new project, you add in the bits and pieces. So you add the camera in, then you add in your background. I don't think it's going to be friendly to me because I don't have, you can sort of see the green screen, in the background at the top and the bottom. So all you do, you make the green screen go longer with your finger and drag it across. And then you can record the video. Once you record the video, you're seeing everything in real time. So because I don't have the green screen, it's not being the, my best friend. But the great thing with that is you'll actually, the kids can see it in real time. Of course, you can do it in selfie mode. Uh, the kids can see what they're interacting with behind them. 
Now, Alex said the Federation has two movie-making kits for your schools, which is great. You get the green screen there. You put it on... It probably, um, if it's a movie making kit, you'll have a tripod there. You put it in selfie mode so kids can actually see themselves interacting with what's around them. I've, I've worked with kindergarten all the way to high school students with this. So kindergarten students are able to do green screening as well as um, the, the little ones and the big ones all together. Um, I did a farm with the little kids and like they were patting the animals. It was great because they could interact with what's going on around them. Um, that doing, I'm going to say, is approximately $5, but I know it's on the pedagogical wheel, which I will share with you now. Up here, doing... Click on that, it's $7.99, so it's gone up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I well, I, I believe that is well worth um, the $7.99, most definitely. All right, um, someone has asked, can I show us how to insert animations in the slides? Now, is that to make my, what animations? images or making my slides go? Moving pictures. So the only way to get animations onto here, the things to fly in. Um, so if you want a, a picture to appear, or you wouldn't per se, for instance, have someone running across the screen. But if you wanted, if I, for instance, with this one here, if I click on my picture, I can get him to fly in, um, to appear, to come out of a shape like that. So that's the only animations that you can do within PowerPoint as opposed to, um, there's not a huge, huge amount that that can happen. Um, but like we can make him spin, swirl in. And so as you can see, you could have, you could have seven, um, you could have seven or eight. Oh, sorry. I will share my screen. Sorry, I thought I had. Um, I will start that all over again. My apologies. Um, so what we can do, once you pick your picture, if you come to animations, there's a whole range of different animations that can happen. We can't make it run, I guess, run on and that type of animation. But if we wanted it to swirl, that might be the first thing that appears. And then we can press. This is my yellow and black Bebot robot. So if we have that next to, so what would happen when we look at um, our slideshow from the beginning? This is the Sydney me Harbour in the Bridge. Background. It is located in Sydney. Okay. This is the. Go to the next slide, and then here comes the first one. I can click on that. This is my yellow and black Bebot robot. Okay, and then you could have five or six on there, and that every time on on the click, something will appear. So what I mean by on the click, if I go here to animations. So over here, you might, we want it to start on click. Um, you could do after previous. So once one of them starts and the next one comes. But my suggestion, if you've got, say, if you were doing fruits and vegetables um, 
in from the country that you are studying you've got to have all the different um all of them set up but uh, when you click so after you've heard the sound this is my yellow and black bebot robot okay after they've listened to that they then click it and then that will get them get them to the next picture and the next picture and the next picture so if i was to control put another one here and i want it to zoom in and that's going to be on the click um, i might insert another audio just to show you record this is my second bbot all right so if i go back to slideshow from the current see how i've got the two speakers there so i don't know what's going to happen or what you could you could do a bit of a quiz you could actually say the fruits I have to listen and see if they're right so when they click on it up oh, it's a a blue a b bot so then i click here this is my second b bot i click and it appears so you could actually do it like a a bit of a quiz saying all the different fruits in the language that the students are learning and they have to try and work out what it is before they click so a bit of a bit of a test bit of a quiz for them all right i know we are running out of time there's only six minutes left are there any questions i know i could i could have you as a captive audience for six hours and not um and not even scratch the surface so um are there any questions someone has like those the tools that i'm showing you um you someone has mentioned that it can be used from kindergarten all the way up to stage um up to high school okay and think of all the things that you could do you could get your older kids to create some of these for your younger kids so that's a good way for you to um for you to be able to get your students um all working together give them a purpose for creating one of these they're teaching um they're teaching they're creating a little teaching tool for the little ones so that's a that's a really good um good way give them a bit of purpose we'll try powerpoint next lesson awesome can we review from any website Um, can you just repeat? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. You're welcome. I'm hoping that you can take some, just even a little bit of what you've learned today. Um, Power Tune. Uh, yeah, Powtoon. So P O W T O O N dot com. That's the website that we used. I'll type that in for you. Uh, thank you, Asma. All right. You know, do you proud, Alex? Oh, Grant, that was amazing. Awesome. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I think, Grant, um, the fact that you, 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 use something and, and I made that comment everybody in grant because the um we don't have internet all the time and something like PowerPoint is has is full of features and I was really really glad glad that you showed it because that's just one feature isn't grant I mean you know of others oh, yeah. that you could there's loads of stuff you can do with PowerPoint. yeah do you have any websites I mean I, I've seen them myself um uh but I don't know them off the top of your head can you do you have any websites or anything uh can you suggest anywhere where we can look for uh uh, activities to to use with PowerPoint like that. Oh no, I just thought of those off the top of my head. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I look. I would off the top of my head. I can't think. Um, I looked. So I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Grant. Yeah. But look, um, it's it's there's, there's there's stuff out there. I've seen them over the years. And, and oh, someone stuff said like Canvas. Canvas yeah. is very good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, um, yeah. I, I guess for time. 
Sorry. I've got, there's about three minutes. Um, I, I, oh, Canava is another one. That's a nice, um, that's an online creative tool. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess using PowerPoint, but actually getting your whole school involved. If you've got older kids and younger kids, getting your older kids to be creative and they're, they're the teachers. So um, that's really exciting because I know at the school that I work at, we we get them to so I'm, I, well, I'm an instructional leader two days a week at a primary school and we're getting our primary kids to be creating content to help um teach um content to the younger kids in an interactive way but yeah most definitely the pedagogical wheel is a great summary of useful apps um there's so many great apps on there as I said, I could spend a whole six hours with you exploring all those apps. Um, but yeah, if you don't have that technology, um, sorry, the internet, by all means, I only scratched the surface with PowerPoint. There's so much that you can do with that. Okay, Grant. Um, all right. Shall we, shall we wrap up there for you? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Grant, look, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of absolutely everybody that, uh, that attended this evening, Grant, Thank you so, so much. That was You're so, welcome. so informative. Um, and we hope to see you again. I'm going to call, call you again one day and, uh, and have you back because this is really Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. um, Grant, you're, you're free to go. I just want to leave a quick message to everybody. All right. Everybody, thank you. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Grant. Thank, thank you. Great. Okay. Excellent. excellent. Thanks, Grant. We'll, Good we'll luck. see you next time. Good luck with it all. Thank you. Good luck. Thank see you, you later. Good work. All right, thank everybody. You. Um, my, uh, just before you leave, could you please thank have a look you. in the chat? I did uh, send you the links to the attendance sheet. There is an attendance mm -hmm. sheet. If you do sign it, I will have a record that you attended this session. If you don't do it, then um, I'm not going to be able to give you the certificate uh, for this particular session and the previous mm -hmm. two. Don't forget there are seven sessions next week. Yes. Um, and if you do need it, please, please email me. You've got my email. Email me. I'll send you the survey form again if you missed it this evening. Next week, we, uh, we have another session. Could you um, I'm going to be sending you some information about that shortly, uh, well, soon, possibly tomorrow. But Could please take note that we do have the um, masterclass, the next international masterclass, which is happening on the 31st of March. If you're interested in uh, another world expert, um, we do have a world expert. We had him last year. He's coming live from Spain. It's Scott Thornbury. And he's a brilliant speaker and academic. He's very practical. He'll be talking about um, what's he going to be talking about this time? Um, I think he's going to be talking about feedback or something along those lines. But uh, you'll definitely be getting an invitation uh, soon. Please remember that the Federation does have these two movie making kits that we're giving out to our community language schools. Uh, they might be limited to members of the Federation, but we've got quite a few. Uh, something to look into. They work with iPads, they've got microphones, green screens, we've got um, a tripod uh, that, that we use. It's got a great little case with where the kids, we've lent them out before and they work really, really well. Um, the information also um, for this sort of thing, if anyone's interested, I do and I have been doing workshops uh, just on these sorts of things. Um, if anyone's interested, I can come out to your schools and continue with the workshop uh, along these same lines, or uh, I'll be holding workshops like this in Dulwich Hill. Okay, so. Hi, Alex. We can't find that uh, uh, the link to register. Okay, look, if you want to wait online, I will, um, I'll send it to you. Okay, so just wait there. I'll put it in the chat very, oh, yeah, sure. very soon. Please, everybody, remember the Google Classroom, the YouTube channel. I've put those there. I'll put them on again now. Remember, if you haven't got them, just stay online and I will put them on the chat. Mm -hmm. That's the video, the PowerPoint presentation, and the uh, they'll be online as of probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll see you all next week. Stay on there. Don't go away. I'm mm -hmm. going to be giving you that information that I just said. If you want to go home, oh sorry, go home, go, go, go and have your dinner. Have a great dinner. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you for attending. You, Stay on you. if you want that information. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you